I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Brian, I'm going to have you take the microphone and introduce our guest and start the interview. Sure. So we're, we're joined by Dave Sheely, who runs the official Skunk 8 headquarters down in uh, South Florida. So welcome, Dave. And um, just out of curiosity, Hello. so how long? Oh yeah, how long have you been running the uh, Skunk Ape headquarters? Oh, I think I went public with it in about 1991. I've had a, a little headquarters, so to speak, off the highway since I was probably a teenager, maybe 15 years old, where I would find things in the woods and put in it and i would bring people in and show them but now it's a a full-fledged uh operation with uh i have employees and it's uh it's a happening place there's a lot going on here now um about the skunk ape when did you yourself uh first see one when i was 10 years old that that's what got my interest i was out behind the, the property here. I live in the Big Cypress National Preserve. It's a 900,000 acre preserve, but it adjoins Everglades National Park and, and a lot of other wild areas. I live in the middle of the largest wild area east of the Mississippi River. It's several million acres. Okay. And that this is this is where I saw the skunk ape, and this is where my research is conducted. Okay, okay, and and uh, how many uh, skunk apes have you seen in your lifetime? Well, I've on three different occasions I've come within sight of them, and it, it was a pretty incredible experience. When when I was young, of course, when I was ten years old, and then later on in life, I took some photographs. And a few years past that, I actually got some video footage that some people may have seen on YouTube only, and that's with the skunk ape, or on or on news channels of a skunk ape uh, running across the marsh here in the Everglades. There's some incredible footage. Uh, it's never really been researched or looked into by any any anybody to speak of. Um, as a matter of fact, no one's ever asked me to take them to that location. Um, I, I do have inquiries on a regular basis from entertainment television shows like Finding Bigfoot or Definitive Evidence. Um, they, they all get a hold of me, but those reality television shows, I feel, are really going to bastardize what I have. I'm really looking uh, more like National Geographic um, I, I do actually do a lot of film work, and um, and and uh, I'm not going to cut myself short. I'm not going to sell out um, to what's going on on television today. Right. Well, kind of an inside joke. I mean, we, we we call that show not finding Bigfoot because we don't think they're ever ever going to find it there, um, with those researchers. I generally don't say that, but I always say they should. I always I've always said they're never going to find Bigfoot. But yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Now, um, out of curiosity, though, uh, so you're down in the Everglades. Um, is wh why did you or why are you in that location? I mean, um, because I, like you know, I live here, here in Orlando, and um, but there have been reports of of uh, the, the the swamp ape or the skunk ape in different parts of Florida besides the Everglades. Do you ever get any reports besides uh, down in South Florida? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course I do. I, I was the one who who validated the. Uh, the Mayaka monster, the Mayaka skunk ape. You see the picture of it with the coming in the palmettos. Um, that was sent to the police department over near. Oh, I, I, I was in Sarasota or St. Pete yeah. uh, when those pictures came out, and they were the police department actually tracked me down and asked me to take a look at them. And 
then that kind of set into motion those pictures being on the internet and, and the popularity of the Mayaka monster. Yeah. Yes. Hey, and hey Dave, can you directly. fill? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, when you get a moment, could you fill us in and just give us a little bit of the history and the background on that? Because it, it, it'd be very interesting. On on the on the Mayaka photograph. Yeah, absolutely. Now that and if well, I, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the one with uh, it, it, it's it's city it, it's nighttime, but you got these red eyes. You can see the outline of an ape behind the palmettos. Is that the the one we're thinking of? Yeah, and you know I'm trying to figure out what direction uh, you know the the show should take because there's so many things we can talk about it. But we're going to take off in that direction right now and I'll tell you what I know about that. Um, the, the pictures were shown to me. I looked at them. Um, it is more or less exactly what I've been seeing, except that the hair was a little longer on it. And I don't know if you've seen uh, where they do layovers of an orangutan over the top of that picture, but it's pretty incredible. Um, it, it actually measures up scientifically to being a, an orangutan in, in facial appearance. And if you ever get a chance to, to get a look at that, I don't know where to find it, but I've looked at it several times. Um, it's, it's incredible. Well, here's what's going on in the Big Cypress right now. My research, since I live in a national park, my family moved here in 1890, you'd ask. That's why we're here. We've been here a while. I have a unique property. All the land around me has been bought up by the federal government. My only neighbors are Seminole Indians, and they're my friends. Um, so back to the Mayaka photograph. So I, I've, I've had a wall up by the national park against my research for uh, probably 15 years. They just uh, said I was like a flim-flam man in the swamp, and I was trying to hawk a T-shirt. Well, I'm a human being. i got to make a living. Of course, you know, you, you got to make money to live. Um, but but that that wasn't my main objective with the skunk ape. What I was trying to do was make people aware that we had a species here that has yet to be identified. Well, after 15 years, the Park Service has finally partnered the, the National Park Service with an orangutan facility in Indonesia. And they're bringing researchers here to the preserve to go into the swamps where I've uncovered these nests in the trees. I call them bedding areas. And so it's not just me seeing something. Um, many people have, and it's actually being investigated right now by the government. It has been for the last year and a half, I recall, is when the first time I, I saw them in the field. So just so you know, and so what 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 I'm seeing, and if you ever see my footage, is not an orangutan. It has a, a longer upper body torso. Um, it runs completely on two legs when it's really on the move. The, the photographs, you don't see the deer in the photographs, but it's actually chasing the deer. And if you're lucky enough to see the footage, it's in about a foot and a half of water the whole time. So it goes down the tree line, but when it crosses the field in front of me, 10 minutes later, and I think this is in July, I mean, it was hot, um, and starts across the field where the deer had run, it's traveling like it's, it's running through a foot and a half of water at close to 15 miles an hour. And you can see at one point in it where it just it is really a wild animal, and both arms are clearly off the ground. And it so there's a lot of similarities I found between orangutans and what I'm seeing. But what I'm seeing is much taller than an orangutan and has has a different mobility. Dave, I've seen that video. I've watched it three or four times. Uh, knowing that we're going to be interviewing you tonight, and it, it's very fascinating. It's got a kind of a brownish red color to it, and it's standing upright. Um, and it, it may look sort of like orangutan, but just for the people out there, it's not an orangutan, right? No, it is absolutely not. Um, uh, it, it, you know, it, it people see them here in trees. Um, 
that's that's a common sighting. That's the difference between the Bigfoot sightings and what we have here. About 50% of the sightings that are reported to my headquarters are of these things in trees. And, and they're, they're five, 600-pound animals. They're, they're incredible strength. Um, but we have a lot of water on the ground here. And and so I can only think that a, a Bigfoot or, or whatever would, would want to get out of the water occasionally, you know. So they, they've got this tree behavior here in the Everglades that's kind of unheard of across the country. You know, Dave, Dave, I've seen that. I, I think I've seen the video that you're referring to as well. Um, do you, have you, is there a way uh, that you could stabilize that? Because, like, you know how, like, they did with the um, the Patterson film um, where they were able to kind of, like, um, stabilize it? And um, are, is there a way that you could do that? The original footage was quite shaky. But if you go on YouTube, Dave Shealy skunk ape footage, that has already been stabilized. Okay. Yeah. And that was stabilized. Okay. Oh, about a year after I took the, took the things, but the original was real shaky. Okay. That's, that might be the one that I saw that. Be, yeah. Yeah. So I'll check that out. But, um, yeah, I was freestanding and I had a zoom lens. I didn't have a tripod. I wasn't prepared for what happened. And so I was basically standing there with a zoom lens and that was a, what accounted for the shakiness. It was more or less my heartbeat, the wind, whatever. You don't have to move much when you're on zoom. Yeah. Now, now I, I, there was one article that I, that I came across that described it and they weren't necessarily quoting you, but uh, they were describing it as it's different. The skunk ape is, is different than a normal Bigfoot. Um, can you maybe explain some of the differences? Okay, one of the things is they're spotted in trees. Um, people do associate odors with Bigfoot. You don't hear about it that much, but most people who encounter a fresh skunk ape bed or have, have an encounter with where one's close, there's this accompanying awful uh, skunky smell. And the third thing, and I would say it's probably the most apparent, is that the tracks... Uh, that I find are four-toed tracks. I've, I've yet to find a five-toed track, and I've collected several hundred track samples. At first, I thought it was a, an anomaly uh, in the beginning, but I, I think that this is uh, pretty much a fact now. They're four-toed. Hmm. And are, are the, the prints consistent in, in how they look with the, the four toes? Um in terms of uh, like how, how big they are, like lengthwise and widthwise. Yeah, yeah, they um, it's 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 like a big human track with four apparent toes, um, uh, and it that's that's what I'm finding. And it and it was uh, in the beginning, it was a real big turnoff to the Bigfoot community in the Pacific Northwest. People were calling me, but I'm mean, it. Things are what they are, and and th these are the tracks that I find, and tracks other people find, and they they can sometimes be confused, although what they don't have the webbing, but we have some really large alligators down here that weigh eight hundred, a thousand pounds, and this time of year, when the water levels are dropping, and they're walking these low swamps from one water hole to the other, trying to keep up with the water and the food supply they leave big tracks almost uh you know 12 to 13 inches long and sometimes people get confused but the skunk ape tracks have no there's no webbing between the toes and the toes are a little thicker mm -hmm. and that's what i find yeah and um how, how often do you do you get reports from from people in that area in this area, it varies, and that's a good question because I'll tell you how the reports come in. I, I'll get a report maybe 50 miles from me of somebody um, has said they seen something cross the road near their house, or I just it could be any any number of things. And I and I I listen and I do what I can to investigate, but then I'll get another call a week later. And somebody telling me that, that they, they're they seeing something, and it's only five miles from the last report, and they don't even know each other. 
And so that's kind of how they come in. And that's the strange part of it. And that's, that's how I, I base the number of skunk apes that, that we have here in the Everglades is by the size of the tracks and the reported sightings. I'll tell you where I'm getting a lot of calls about, and it's from people, two people have recalled, and they don't even live there. They were just passing through. But this is off of I-95 all the way up by St. Petersburg. I've had two reports from passers on by on I-95 on who've seen something, and I've had a couple people call in, and that's just been in the last month. So when I hear things like that, when it starts to trend in an area and people are seeing it, I can't help but believe it after talking to the people because they don't know each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a good point. Um, I mean, when, when two people, complete strangers, are reporting the same thing, that's, that's pretty good evidence that th there might be something there. As far as I'm concerned, it's it's real good evidence. Doesn't necessarily mean there is, but there's a high probability um, that that there's you know something worth looking into. Yeah, and so I do some some investigations out of my area, but mostly I keep it keep it here. It's just easier because like yeah. I'll have people come in all the time. Hey, we just saw skunk ape down the road. And then I'll listen to them and they'll tell me where, and I know it's a bear crossing and the bears are a little thin around here sometimes. And they, they look like monkeys, you know, except they're on all four. So I just kind of discount those. But when somebody comes in and says, Hey, it was on two legs walking across the road. A lot of people saw it. I go down and take a look. Yeah. I do that every time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, what, what do you what do you what do you think that they eat? What's their diet like? I mean, deer probably because you said that. Uh, well, obviously they were chasing one. Yeah. I know what they eat. They they're omnivores. They're they're survivalists, just like black bears. They're going to eat plants and animals. They eat fish. They eat snakes. They eat alligators. They eat grasses. We have a, a believe it or not, there's a lot of available food sources of the of the you know the the plants here there's pond apples acorns uh we have uh, palms palm berries there's a lot of food here there's tons and tons and tons of food here in the everglades so that was one of the things is in the beginning we're like how could an animal survive here that was that large there's just not enough food around <coughs> but um, that could be further from the truth you just got to know what you can eat and what you can't yeah yeah yeah, don't eat any mushrooms in the Everglades or you'll be sorry. I can tell you that right now. But there is a lot of things you can eat. Yeah. Um, have you ever found any other things besides prints, like um, like hair samples or anything like that? Or Yeah, I have some that I haven't done anything with. But I um, see, he don't do it no more. But Robert, his name was Robert Stack. He was the voice. Oh. Unsolved mysteries. Of unsolved mysteries, yeah, and 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 I actually knew him through through my research, and I did a I did a show with him where they went in great detail. In fact, I've I've done a lot of television overseas, not so much in recent years. I've just kind of backed off. I do a lot of behind scenes work with with television shows, so but and I don't get in front of the camera very often. But they actually took the hair and had it analyzed. They had it uh, microscopical something done to it and, and DNA, and it both came back unknown species. So yeah. they knew what it wasn't, but they couldn't tell what it was. And that's kind of the way that that, that, that left hanging. Now, they had this show called Definitive Evidence on and that was where it was like a bunch of know-it-all sitting around a table, basically debunking anything that ever happened with anybody that saw Bigfoot or had a Bigfoot bone or whatever. And they contacted me, and I have a tooth that I found in a forest. And it's a human tooth, but it's a huge tooth. And um, I was thinking about maybe giving it to them and letting them look into it. But I, like I said, I'm just so 
so disappointed in in the the quality of of television when it comes to Bigfoot. Um, <laughs> I just decided. Yeah. I just decided not to. I you know I just you get tired of it. You know they get tired of it. Well, we're going to be coming down from New York, and uh, we're going to be staying over on South Beach, and uh, we'd like to come out. Uh, we're going to be down there for three days. So we want to go skunk ape hunting with you. And, um, oh, and by the way, we don't have any money, so you know you, we're not going to be able to you know help you out at all. But we want to come do a television show. I ain't got time for that crap. I mean, <laughs> I'm not I'm not a sap. What I think I am. <laughs> I mean, you, I would. They just, that's the way it is, though. And and we could talk about that a little more. I mean, because that's my hot button. My hot button is that I live in a national park, and when you film in a national park, you have to get permits from the government to do it. It's a highly regulated thing. You have to have a park ranger go with you into the forest while you film. You're not allowed to run around filming it damn television show in the middle of the Everglades. That's illegal. They don't want to deal with that. These All of these shows you're seeing on TV, they don't want to deal with that. They don't want nothing to do with that. That's yeah. why you get what you get on TV. You get crap. That's what you get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People wanting to make a fast buck, jerking somebody around on his couch every what once a week for two months over something that's not even real. <laughs> yeah, so I do. Yeah. Just done with it, and I make a lot of money off of them shows. I I take them take them places. I, I hold a lot of permits to for restricted wildlife, and and I I'm behind the scenes on a lot of running shows right now. And like I said, it's crap. I mean, I I make money at it, but it's nothing. It's not real. Television is fake. Hello, <laughs> hello, world. Yeah. Fake TV. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, okay. going, going going back to the <laughs> DNA thing. Uh, yeah, w Will knows yeah. of a story too, where um, um, Will, if you want to go over the details real quick. But anyways, though, they they did get. I think they even got blood, if I'm not mistaken. But like the same thing that as you said, though, it it goes back, and they, when they test it, it comes back as you know unknown species <laughs> or unknown primate. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, what I'm what I'm seeing is is are you know, real. What I have seen are real live creatures, animals, primates. I know this. People around here see it. It's just a matter of fact to me. And mm. I I really don't understand though why of all the Bigfoot stuff you know in in the country why they why they haven't got more evidence you know. Because I've got a bunch of it here. I'm just one person. Yeah. I've got here. I, I've collected tracks. I've taken photographs. I've photographed the bedding areas. I mean, come on. What What do you want me to do? Go out and kill one? I mean, that's about the uh, – I, and that's not going to happen. So people say, well, there's no evidence. <laughs> Bullshit. I've got evidence. I've had evidence. Why hasn't anybody looked into my film and says, you know, it's great idea to blow it off as a guy in a gorilla suit, but unfortunately, science and the truth is that it's not a guy in a gorilla suit. Hello, <laughs> but nobody's done that. You know, is, is you can simply prove it by by the mobility of the animal and how fast it's running, how long it was upright. I mean, it's just matter of fact. So to say there's no evidence, that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I, I think there's a new show called Expedition Bigfoot. Have they gotten, have they reached out to you at all? Have you heard anything from them? No, not yet. Oh. Not yet. But I'm going to have a hard time holding a straight face when they do get here. <laughs> yep. That's, well, that's now the, the primatologist from that, that show is from, she's from Miami. She's, or she's from South Florida. Um, <laughs> I got not that it means question. anything. What, what, what size, what size is she? Is she a B cup, a D cup? Because that's how you get on a show like that. So let's just cut the chase. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> you know, they, they do that. Yeah. They put a good looking girl on the show. If she's a hot chick, they want her on there because that's ratings. I'll have to meet her. And, and, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I'm just saying, 
All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, the um, just out of curiosity, with the reports that you get, are they mostly just simply uh, like quick, real quick sightings, or have there ever been any reports of them actually ha- uh, with, with like a, a longer in terms of time, longer sighting, and maybe um, have there ever been any signs of aggression from from them or um, anything like that? Yeah. Oh, there's been there's been a lot of incidents where people had have had like a, a more than just a glance at a skunk ape. For instance, um, about nine years ago, there were two European women on a, a a road near me called Turner River Road, and they were photographing bromeliads. And a bromeliad is like an air, it's called, we call them air plants. And in the springtime of the year, they put a really pretty bloom on it. So they were stopping, they had a convertible going down the road, getting out, setting out their tripod and photographing these bromeliads. Well, they heard something rustling in the bushes by their car. Uh, they turned and looked back and out of the bushes came this huge, they, they called it an ape man. And it was growling at them. Uh, it, it went in the bushes, came out a couple of times. They were scared for their lives. They ran to the car and jumped in it and went to the National Park Service, and that's where they reported the incident. But what made the incident unusual, they sent them down to talk to me after they got down to the uh, the visitor center. They, they said, you need to go talk to this guy. What was unusual was it had an erection. And that's, oh, that, I mean, that's what they were saying. Like, it was like, <laughs> like, a sexually, it was like a sexual type encounter. Uh, and, and it, it scared the hell out of them. So there was that incident. Then there's the incident at the, the, there's two tribes of Indians that live nearby. There's the Seminole Indians and the Miccosukee Indians. And for years, they had no fences around their camps or anything. And you drive down the road and they're out there taking a bath or whatever. It was nice at times. Sometimes it wasn't so nice, but they, they've come a long way. They, they got a lot of money now. They got the casinos and they live in, you know, quarter million dollar homes. And, but they have a church and there's a fence around it. And just recently they put the fence up and they're claiming that a skunk ape went into their church and tore up everything. It was, they said it tore all, everything off the walls. It busted off the doors. And so now it's fenced in. So that's something that's recent. And, and so that's for out from the Indian tribe. Now, uh, back in the seventies, there were four hunters at a hunting camp in the Everglades and they were playing cards in the cabin and they had a lantern hanging up and they were cooking on the stove. Well, there was an Oak tree that grew near the cabin, grew up and a limb grew out over the Oak tree. And it's like 10 o'clock at night. They're playing cards. They're just finished up cooking. And a skunk ape had crawled up into that oak tree, and it fell off the limb and came right down through the roof of the cabin, busted the roof in, knocked the light out. For just a second, they had a brief look at it. Then, thank God, the fire went out. Big crash, boom, bang. They finally got some light to see what had happened, and it had taken out the whole back wall of the cabin and ran off into the forest. So there's been incidences like that, and I could tell you a hundred stories that I've heard from the Seminole Indians. Oh, you yeah. want to hear one? Yeah, yeah. We, okay. We've heard a lot of, um, um, well, not just in Florida, but a lot of uh, stories on, on reservations and things like that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, there's the simple ones from up around Brighton on the north side of Lake Okeechobee where the old Indian man told me he was sitting in his cheeky and he was looking out over the cow pasture and he saw one walk across the cow pasture. I mean, he told me that. He got no reason to lie to me. And so I believe it. But here, when the, when the Seminoles were at war and they were being pushed down um, into Florida, and the Seminoles got down here. I live in the heart of the Everglades. This is the strong. I live actually. I live exactly in the middle. I mean, like on a half a mile each. I mean, 
I live in the stronghold of the Seminole tribe in the forest I live in is where when they decided to end the war because it was the longest and most deadliest Indian war in American history. And the government says there's not enough of them. Forget it. We've had enough. They've, these Seminoles never surrendered. They're my friends. They're my neighbors right now. But they lived right here in the forest around my house. So when, when they got here during the war, they tell me that they came into contact with some skunk apes that were living in a palmetto hammock out on the marshes. One of the Indians had seen them there. But they were pretty worn out. They were they were they were beaten. They had no clothes. They had no weapons. They were for the most part naked. And um, they had a, a a meeting where the elders all got together and they decided that they needed all the help that they could get. They had taken in some escaped slaves, and I don't know if you've heard of the Black Seminole, but. A, a lot of the escaped slaves headed into Florida and wound up here in the Everglades, and they fought side by side with the Seminoles. But the Seminoles wanted even more strength, and they thought that if they could communicate with this group of skunk apes that they had found down here, that they would have an ally that was strong, knew the woods, and could help them. So they sent an Indian in to this hammock where they, they had found these skunk apes, and the Indian went in. And a few days later, he came back and he told him, he says, yes, I found him. And I tried to explain to them what was going on and that we needed help. But they didn't understand what I was saying. We couldn't communicate. And it was just, it just wasn't going to happen. And that was the message that he returned with. So, yeah, they, they believe in it. They, they, they know that, that what I'm seeing is real. Now, the the newer the the hundred year old medicine man now he's a friend of mine he passed away he told me he said David he said what you're seeing is a spirit it's a spirit that lives inside the earth and not everyone can see it some people will see it and some people won't he said um, but this is what he told me this is what we believe and. And so, you know, they have a lot of beliefs. And I've actually found the skunk ape tracks coming out of alligator dens during the dry season, where for whatever reason, they'll go and take refuge in these caves in the banks as the water drops. So there's a lot of truth in what he told me. So that's, that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, you know, I've I've heard that too before about them going into al- alligator dens too. Um, but uh, let me ask you, going going back to the the church incident for a second, did the people, did the people do anything to provoke that Sasquatch? Uh, was it was it just pissed off, or did it just kind of do that on its own? I don't know what happened. I don't know. I was in that. I went to that church. Uh, I, it was Easter. Uh, this past Easter, I went to the Easter service there. There's just a few Indians that attend, mainly old men, and I sat with them. And I hadn't, I hadn't heard anything about it. I just heard about this recently, so I got to look into it. Huh. Yeah. Now, yeah, you know, uh, I was wondering. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump in real quick. I, I just, I'm just going to throw in a comment, more than a question, and I was just kind of wondering if that didn't tear under the church and tear things up as kind of a territorial, you know, maybe it felt like as an invasion of its territory or it was trying to take dominance over that territory. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, and if you have a thought on that, that'd that'd be interesting. I, I, I don't, like I said, I, I really, I really haven't formed any opinions on it yet. I, I, I don't know. We haven't had bad bugs. I can't maybe something try to get in there to get out of the mosquitoes or to get away from the high water. And we just haven't had either of those right now. So I don't know what would have provoked it. Yeah. And what, where would I, I'm trying to think, where did I, I this was, a, this was, um, I just read this just the other night. I just read it the other night. So I'm a little, I'm, and I normally I have Indians stop by and see me every day and I would ask one, but I just, I've been busy today. I've been, I've been shooting a rap video. 
yeah, for the money, that's it. Um, <laughs> with a uh, with a uh, little yachty, I don't. You probably never heard of him. He's twenty two years old. He's got eight million dollars in the bank. He's here at my place now. So you know, you got to make it where you can. But <laughs> whatever. But that's why I that's why I haven't found out more about it because I haven't had anybody. I've had we've been on set. We've had everything quiet today. I haven't really been up to the front to see what's going on, or I would have had the answer for you. Well, Dave, just in general, do you think that they're very territorial? Uh, will they uh, like show signs of um, of aggression if 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 humans get too close? <laughs> well, I I'm sure that they would. And in saying that, I got to tell you that there are huge areas, 50,000 acres, 40,000 acre areas that nobody has stepped foot in in the last 40 years here in the Everglades. So even though they may be territorial, I think that they still back off into areas where they're not going to be disturbed nevertheless. Now, if you were to go to, into one of the areas that that they've kind of set up a new camp at, you might could be in for trouble. The Indians say if you shoot one in the woods, watch out because you'll never make it out alive. And there's been a lot of people come up missing in the Everglades in my lifetime. Yeah, do, I mean, do you do you trace that to uh, this creature? Do you think those missing people? Some of the incidences, definitely, sure, like hunters that don't come out of the woods and they, there's never a trace found. Well, you know, something happened. I mean, you know, they died, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a mystery. The Everglades is full of mysteries. I mean, there's things that go on here that don't go on anywhere else, that's for sure. Um it's just, it's, it's like I said, it's a wild area. It's the largest wild area east of the Mississippi. And it is, we have the, the unconquered Seminole Indians that live here. And they, they continue with their religion and their, their culture and way of life like they did 200 years ago. And a lot of that things that they do are not acceptable uh, in, 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 in America today, a lot of their practices would be taboo. So there's a lot of things that aren't talked about as well here. Mm. Now, when you do get reports, do you get reports of them being, uh, alone? Or do you think that when you see one, there are probably more that you're, that are by near there that you don't see? They normally are are one animal but there are occasionally multiple sightings and where i'm where i'm at there's a big swamp called the fakahatchee it's called the fakahatchee strand state preserve and it's this huge giant swamp and there people have over the years have reported multiple sightings which is that's an, an, an anomaly in my research that i get this oh we saw a couple of skunk apes cross the trail or we saw three skunk apes. I get sightings like that out of that area, but where I'm at and the, generally the Everglades as a whole, it's individual animals. <laughs> and uh, l- let me ask you too, uh, the, the, the people in your area, um, do, do, are there still a lot of skeptics around where you live or are, are people kind of more open-minded to the possibility that the creature exists well at first i mean in, in my area all i got's a bunch of park rangers from out of town i mean there's 300 of them yeah they're not they're not skeptical as much as they were they're they're becoming more open-minded i don't really run into a lot of skeptics anymore um i know they're out there there's you know it, let's face it there's haters in the world if you're doing good they want to put you down because I guess it makes them feel good, but there's nobody here doing the real research and nobody that's, that's, that's putting feet on the ground and going into the woods. So if I do get some negative feedback, I just think, ah, it's just some know it all. And I just blow it off. Yeah. Now, now, now I know that you do tours too, right? So are there any uh, skeptics that come on your tour that were, 
that didn't believe in the subject, but then after going on your tour and, and seeing your your uh, your place, the headquarters, and all the evidence, that they left very very convinced that it does exist. Well, the tours are sanctioned by the national park. All of the guides that that do the tours have to go through a course uh, by the national park because it, it, it takes place in the national park. And on our general tours, and we take out 50 to 100 people a day into the Everglades, um, a lot of them are here for the skunk ape, but the tour guide isn't free to discuss a skunk ape as being a real living being because that's against park rules. So they have to say, well, it's a, a local, um, and, I, and I have a lot of pull on, on how it's explained, but it, it's not a local myth. I told them that right out the gate. Don't be calling me a myth so they call it a local legend uh-huh. and they talk about the legend of the skunk ape and um most everybody who who actually comes here and sees the vastness of the area and just the, the amount the abundance of life here um leaves convinced that there's maybe maybe there's a little more to it than what they're seeing because they're only here a little time you know and they the forests are so big so in that way they're convinced yeah now as far as me personally taking people out skunk ape hunting once again um i i i have i i would rather starve to death than sit in a class and have a park ranger tell me what i can say and what i can't say yeah. And I, so I refuse to get a permit. Um, my son holds all of those permits for this park and he, he's, he has turned the park around. We are, a, we're a thriving business. Um, I, I gave the land, my brother and I decided to give him the land and, and let him and watch him live out his life. And he's doing very well with it. I'm here on the property. Now I have a home and my bills are paid for life, so I can't complain. Um, but I, I do take people out, but when I do, I have to bring guides with me and, and then there, there's the, there's the transportation that's involved. And if, if they really want to go looking and there's food to bring along, you can call it food, you can call it catering, you can call it what you want, Well, you can call it, it gets expensive. That's the best thing to call it. Um, just a typical expedition for two people for uh, a night in the Everglades is, is you know, 2,500 bucks. Um, and, and that that's because I got to pay the swamp buggy 1,500 bucks out the gate. Then you got to buy food. And it sounds like I'm being a, like a sleazy or something, but I don't really make anything. That's just what it cost. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and, and I, and, I don't know. I'm getting old. I'm 56 years old. Somebody says, well, we'll just walk then. We'll come down to Bigfoot hunting with you, and we'll just walk with you. Well, I mean, goddamn, it's the Everglades. I'm 56 years old. Give me a break. Um, <laughs> why don't you go for a walk without me? Um, so that's just where I'm at with that, you know. Like you guys, we talked and did the podcast, and you come down here, and you're like, Dave, we want to look around. I'll be more than happy to to show you where to go, to tell you what to do. And chances are you'll be successful if you want to do it. But I don't really want to go camping. Not, you know, yeah. I, maybe. maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't like being have to make a commitment. <laughs> but, I mean, you'd have a good time. And I, I would put you in some hot spots, no doubt. And I'd do a little extra for you guys. You know that. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, you know. Hey, Dave, I got to tell you uh, real quick, my favorite yeah. story that you have of of this skunk, skunk, skunk ape is when you, I think you were 10 years old, you and your brother, and the grass was too high, whatever the, you know, whatever kind of uh, swamp grass they got there, and your brother yeah. was seeing it. Can you tell that story? <laughs> uh, he put you on your yeah. shoulders or something? Yeah, they actually reenacted all that on Unsolved Mystery. So if you ever get a chance to see that episode, you should watch it because they went into great detail. Um, but my brother and I, there was a rule in the house. If we could kill a deer, 
before the school bus came, we didn't have to go to school because we had to clean it and package it. That's what we ate. That's what we live on. But I grew up poor. Um, and so we got up early that morning and took off out of the back of the park here and we're walking. And my brother said, Hey, Hey, stop, stop. There's something up ahead. And I couldn't see cause the grass was so high and he was looking real hard. And he said, it's a skunk ape. And I said, what, what do you mean? He said, yeah, it's a skunk ape. And I said, let me see, let me see. And he picked me up. He just kind of picked me up under the arms lifted me up to where I was about his head height, not up over his head, but I got my head up there where his head was, where I could see out. And about a hundred yards in front of us in some grass, it was about five foot of grass or so. There was this big animal walking along like a man, just plowing through the grass. And, um, we had a gun and to this day, I, I don't know. I mean, we just, we we're always taught if you shoot something, eat it. Um, we just didn't shoot anything. We we shot what we were hunting. For some reason, we didn't shoot it. I'm glad we didn't. Then we just came back out of the woods and we went to school that day. Of course, we told everybody what we'd seen. I told my mom and dad. And that night, the neighbor came down and he wanted to know more about it. Um, but that's that story. If you wanted to hear it, that's it. Wow. Now, Are now you Dave, there? Yeah, Dave. So yeah, Dave, yeah, no, no, I, I am. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Dave. So, um, when when somebody, like, let's say, like, you you were talking about the the place up by Saint Petersburg, but let's let's say that um that somebody from that area has a sighting and they contact you. Do you actually do you go out and uh, just investigate the area where the, where um they reported that? A lot of times it's on private property. I mean, you're looking off the interstate, you're looking at cattle gates and stuff. If it's, if it's a state park or something like that, where I can get easy access. But if I got to track down the land on and get permission to go on the property, I, I, you know, sometimes I just, I just pass on it because it's so much. A lot of it's owned by corporations. And that's why I'm really blessed to be, in so good with the Seminole tribe. And early in my research, I, I had a real problem with the cattle ranches um, north of the preserve, um, up to up through up into Kissimmee. But now, if 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 I go and it's it's a family-owned ranch where I can talk to the owners, they're more than happy to let me on it. So I have I have access to lots and lots of land here in Florida, all the way up into my ACA. There's a lot of big hunting leases where they're happy to see me when I get there. And I'm so blessed because it's been a long road to get the the notoriety for the skunk ape that allows me to, to have that access. I'm just real grateful for it. Right, right. Oh, also, I was going to ask, too. Um, because with with other Bigfoots in other areas, there are a lot of uh, vocalizations that people report. Do these mm-hmm. skunk apes, do they uh, vocalize at all, uh, like loud screams that people report? <laughs> the only sounds that I've ever heard in the Everglades that I couldn't identify and I associated to be skunk apes was different than what most people would expect. It was like a a cooing sound, kind of like, like that. And that, those are the sounds that, that I hear, like kind of like a berry white dove call, you know, like, like that. (laughs) And uh, so, but like, so we're just, for instance, you know, just, so I'm filming today with, you know, who, and we're doing this and that. And they're like, what kind of sounds do they make? And so I told them. And then, so they, I had this big foot, like a big foot, look like a duck call. You blow on it and it makes some stupid sound. I said, here, just blow on this. And I gave it to them and they're up in the tree getting filmed. Like they're trying to call skunk ape blowing on the damn thing. But like I said, that's television. I would never do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are always doing that. No, you know, it look, looks good. Looks good on camera. Oh man. But no, the beating on trees, I would never beat on a tree. I would never throw rocks. I would never holler. 
I would never play. I had a guy call me the night, and he was telling me that this Bigfoot went crazy up north because there were some people camping, and they were playing ACDC music. I'm thinking, what? You got something against rock and roll? Or I mean, <laughs> I, I just don't get that kind of stuff. I would. I, I mean, I just would never. Nothing's going to come to that. Yeah. I mean, every wildlife spooks when you do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So. I, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no. So I mean, I I I'm a hunter. I'm I'm stealthy. I'm quiet. I walk softly. I use the wind. Um, I use lighting a lot when I'm hunting. I try to keep the sun behind me and so I can see out and the light illuminates animals like deer stand out like a sore thumb. If the light's right, but if the light's wrong, you can't see them for hell. I use all of that. That's what I do. I, I, yeah, I don't beat on trees and stuff. That's just not how I, I do my research. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry. A lot of people probably don't like that, but I mean, I just never had any luck with it, so I don't do it. Yeah. I, you know what? I got, I got to jump in real quick. I'm skeptical if they beat on trees. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Dave? I don't know. I know all I can say, you know, just to keep the peace, in the Bigfoot community, all I can say is I don't know about the Bigfoot. I haven't been to the Pacific Northwest or to where that kind of stuff occurs. So maybe, maybe it's maybe there's something to it. But here in the Everglades, if you beat on a tree, you're going to run everything off. Right? At least the animals that I've been studying, I feel would run off. And the last thing I would want to do, yeah, is I think you're going to run. The tree. I, I think you're going to run things off. Pretty much anywhere. Hey, quick question. You've heard a lot of stories. Have you heard any that you think are kind of funny, a little bit humorous that, that mm -hmm. you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Um, I get this guy. He comes in, he comes in my walks in my shop and he says, I just met your buddy. And I said, who would that be? He said, your buddy down the road. I said, what buddy? He said, well, I was coming down the road. And he said, in the middle of the road, there's a, he said, there's a guy, there's, they said, there's a Bigfoot in the road. He said, I saw a Bigfoot and it walked off in the bushes. So I pulled off the road, he said, and I walked, or I walked out in there and he said, there was a little, like one of those four wheeler tracks, like a quad runner had drove off the side of the road and was parked behind some trees. And he said, when he got back there, there was a guy sitting on one of those four wheelers in a gorilla suit and he had his head off. He pulled the, the mask off of his head and he was drinking a beer. And the guy says, what the hell are you doing to him? He says, well, Dave's my buddy down there. And I just figured I'd get him some business today. So I'm just out here doing this. He said, well, you're crazy as hell. Somebody's going to shoot you. He said, oh, I don't care. I'm getting old anyhow. And so... I went down there looking, and I saw where he had parked and all, but I never found out who it was. But I, that was that was funny. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say I was gonna go down there and say you need to stop this, but I never met the guy. I don't know who it was, but that was funny. <laughs> that is definitely that's a good one for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, look, everybody's got fans. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, and, and you got to say, you got to admit, that is not a, a wise thing to do. <laughs> oh, hell no. Not down here. And, and you know, that's another thing. When my sightings, like in the 90s, there was no law here. This is the end of the road. I live at the bottom of the hill. There's no law here. The law only really came around here starting in about 1990. But Everybody carried guns. People shot all the time. I had to put a brim in front of my house. I was afraid somebody on the highway was going to put a bullet through it, you know, by accident. So, yeah, it is dangerous. And I, I you know, that's not recommended, especially down here in the Everglades to run around in a gorilla suit. You could get shot. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, well, quick question. What, what's your, what's yep. your favorite encounter story? My favorite encounter story is one that I really don't don't include on my resume because it was I was never 
I never actually saw the animals, but I, I know, I know what was there is I was in a saw palmetto thicket and it was during the season when they have berries on it. Uh, and they get a lot of berries and, and, and they're, they're, they're pretty valuable. So there were, a, um, a lot of, uh, migrant workers, they sneak them in in vans and stuff. And in the, in early morning before light, they go into the forest and they pick berries and stack them by the roads. And then they pick them up at night and kind of clandestine thing they do. But the parks crack down on it. So I went way, way off base. I went way out. I was about 14 miles off of the main highway. And I was in a saw palmetto patch that probably covered maybe 20,000 acres. It was huge. And I figured it would be a good spot, a good food source. And it was in an area where there had been some recent sightings. So I was just kind of breathing through it with a with the wind in my face and, and the light in my favor, moving slowly. And I saw the bushes rustling ahead of me, and that's when I started catching a real strong odor of a skunk ape. And so I just kind of held back and watched, and I could just see the palmettos moving. And then I noticed to the left of where what I was seeing them moving, I saw another something moving, and... And there was probably three or four animals in there. And and I saw the back of one's head. It might have been a, a bear that stood up and I caught the back of its head. But generally, when when a bear stands up, and this is crazy. Now, if he's profiling you, you see that Roman nose. So that's a dead giveaway. But if he's got his back of his head and stands up, the ears are very apparent. Although the bear's ears are small, on the head, when they stand up from the back, there it looks like Mickey Mouse. It's ridiculous. It didn't have that. I saw that. It didn't have it. And I want to say I saw a skunk ape so bad, but I'm just not sure. But I think I came up on a small group of skunk apes that were foraging in these palmettos. So that's probably the, 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 the nicest, uh, you know, I've ever had as far as an experience goes. Unfortunately, the ground was too dry. I couldn't pick up any tracks. I didn't get a good enough view to really say that it was skunk apes, but I believe it was in my heart. You know, it it sounds like it was. Yeah, absolutely. And it's an interesting story. That is really a cool story. Um, It was. One thing I do want to do is I would like people to find your website. Uh, I think I'm on it, but if you could tell everybody what's uh, wh- how can they find your website? Well, my place is called Skunk Ape Research Headquarters, and you can Google it. My website is Skunk Ape dot info not skunkape.com it's skunkape.info and there's some good information on there and i don't know how you can find it but if you want to watch a fun movie i did a real fun movie a long time ago with a friend of mine it's called the ochapi skunk ape and it's online now and i'm getting a lot of visitors into my shop who enjoyed watching it so it's called the ochapi skunk ape and yeah, it was done quick and by a friend, but it's kind of fun to watch. I don't know. Well, what we'll, uh, we'll definitely them. keep an eye out for it. And mm-hmm. I want to tell folks, I'm on your website right now, and you've got a lot of good stuff on here. you got a gift shop. you got tours, uh, zoo, camping. Um, and Correct. so, yeah, yeah. So a lot of really good stuff here and, uh, you know, contact information. Um, at the end of the show, what I'd like to do is um, see if we could if, could we use one of the images on here with your picture on it to use for this episode uh, to kind of promote you and, and promote your shop a little bit. You use whatever you want, guys. You got my permission. Use whatever you want. It's fine with me. Anything you see of my picture on, you can have it. Dave, I got to. Well, say there's it. one here that we're going to use. I, I got to say, Dave, I. I have got a bit of a bug that's why i haven't been talking um but i've thoroughly enjoyed listening to you <laughs> really interesting yeah oh uh-huh. uh, i get fired up um on a lot of issues too and i'm glad i didn't on your show but 
I mean, I, I, I am well versed in South Florida as a whole and all of the environmental issues. So, you know, maybe sometime we'll talk about that. You yeah. Bet. And we got to definitely have you back. You're a really interesting guy. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. It's been nice hey, talking with y'all. Hey, Dave, I, I have one final question, though. Um, Because you mentioned the Unsolved Mysteries. Is there any way that uh, I can find that? Because I've actually looked, because I used to watch that show a lot, and I, I, I still love that show. And I could s- still find old episodes on um, on YouTube, but I, I looked one time for if they ever did a, a show on Bigfoot, and I couldn't find one. Is there a way that... Uh, do you know any way that that uh, me and other people could find that episode? You I, I no, they 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 still show it all the time, and they show it on that show where they do the like the um, unsolved murders and all of that. I don't know what that, that channel's called, but oh. they still run they still run unsolved mysteries on it. It's it's the Mister Murder Mystery Channel, you know oh. the the lab work or whatever that's all the different things but so i don't really know i can tell you this that unsolved mysteries was bought by another company called cosgrove entertainment and they they pulled robert stack talking and put a new guy in but it's the same story in the same words okay Okay. but it's, it's cosgrove entertainment Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot for for Dave. coming. Out. Yeah, we'll have to have definitely have to have you on again. Sometime. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to be. And anything going on here in South Florida? I'm I'm right in the middle of the python thing. I own the second largest python in captivity in the entire world. I wasn't on this. I think I'll be on discovery this coming Tuesday night on guardians of the glades at 10 o'clock next okay. Tuesday. And you will see my shop and, and I'm, I'm behind the scenes and all of the guardians of the glades episodes. As a matter of fact, dusty was trying to call me right when I went on with y'all, he's the star of it, but that's a neat show about the glades. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. yeah it's super, you know, and, you okay. see anything here in the glades? Anteaters, hyenas, emus. There, there's all kinds of stuff running around here. It's crazy. <laughs> all right. So you have a lot well, of uh, invasive species running around in the glades, right? Sure, and not only running around, swimming around. The water is loaded with exotic species: peacock, bass, walking catfish. Uh, you name it, it's there. And the native fish, believe it or not, are holding their own. And uh, so, you know, the Everglades, as bad as it sounds, I mean, there's a lot of fish. If you like to fish, woo, boy, the Everglades is the place to fish. You you can catch anything. They're the best fishing in the world here. <laughs> okay, fellas, we're out of time. Dave, thank you so much. And folks. Okay, you're welcome. Folks, yep. stay tuned for the second segment. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open now.